Greetings. Today I'd like to do a little quick video comparing um, Isotopes, Voice Denoise plugin, and a little bit of Neutron 3 as well with a Cedar DNS 8D. For a little bit of background, uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I do, um, I use Dante to connect uh, my various audio devices together. I do a lot of video conferencing, especially with, you know, pandemic world, right? And um, I am in a room that has an absolutely massive amount of ambient noise due to the server rack behind me that um, right now is currently in a worst case situation of everything is running at full tilt rendering. So it's kicking out a lot of ambient noise and you can probably hear that in the background when I'm talking. Um, what I have been doing in for um, the last, I don't know, five, six months is um, I have the mic going into a Rodecaster Pro the, audio, the monitor outs of the Rodecaster Pro go into uh, Focus Night, Focusrite RedNet X2P. That converts to Dante. The Dante from that goes to the Mac over here, or that's what I've been doing, um, and runs through Isotope, and then comes back from Isotope to this computer and is then mixed in via total mix and so forth to go into whatever video conferencing app happen to be using for depending on who the vendor or customer is at the time right and that works and you know i'm not doing gonna, not going to do any post processing on the audio on this recording so you can get the full effect of what's getting picked up and how these things behave. And um, <clears throat> while it works, um, I just didn't like the dependency on running through the Mac because um, there are stability issues there and I've had it die a few times uh, in the middle of a conference call and then I have to race and repatch Dante to send the audio direct to the computer and then it's got a lot more noise. And so I was doing some looking around and I saw that Cedar uh, Audio, who is a company that is used in professional broadcast, live film, etc. As of what I guess middle of last year introduced uh, the 8D model, which is eight channels of their dialogue uh, noise suppression system and uh, with Dante in and out. You can also do AES, but I'm, my, my use case is Dante. And so they're not inexpensive by any stretch. In fact, it's actually pretty expensive. But I've, after Debating it, doing a bunch of research, I figured, well, okay, I'm going to roll the dice, see if it works. If it doesn't, then I guess I can always return it, right? And so it came in, and I am, uh, if you want the TLDR, um, I think it works better than Isotope uh, voice uh, denoise plugin, um, but we'll go into that for a little bit more detail. What you've been listening to me through right now is Isotope. And I will switch over to um, show you how I have Isotope configured. The input chain here is um, this one here. You can see it's uh, stereo Dante 3 and 4 in. I'm using a program called Live Professor to basically be able to, the live professor lets you read from an audio interface, whatever channels you want, run it through a chain of plugins, and then send it back out through whatever interface you want on, could be different channels. Now, in my case, I'm doing the same channel numbers in and out just to make life easier, right? So you got the Rodecaster Pro coming in, 
first block it gets to is a neutron three block that has both an equalizer in it, and this equalizer is basically just set up to be a uh, very hard um, high pass at about 100 hertz. Uh, sorry, 80 hertz. Um, and that's just to get, you know, that's pretty standard for, vo for when you're recording voice and whatnot, get rid of all the low frequency hum and up, you know, you can see here that it's actually reducing a fair bit below uh, 100 hertz. The next thing that it goes through is actually a three band, multi band uh, noise gate that have slightly different settings for the different band ranges. And so that's why when I stop talking, you can hear that it actually pretty much cuts out entirely, right? But when I am talking, you do get a lot of the background noise, especially the sort of higher pitched background noise, uh, which is the fans in the NAS power supplies coming through. Uh, and then that goes into the voice denoise plugin. And I do not have this in adaptive mode because if you put it in adaptive mode and you have a noise gate in front of it, what you find is, is that when the noise gate has turned things off, it does, it's not smart enough to say, hey, there's no signal, I'm gonna stay where I was at. Instead, it drops all the thresholds way down to the bottom so that when you start talking again, it's just horrible because it's gotta catch back up with where you're at and uh, it takes it like five to 10 seconds to do that, right? So <clears throat> basically I have a, a static um, curve here, which I've sort of refined over time. It's not really that um, special, you know, I'm trying to keep it fairly simple. And then because there's just so much noise in here, I have the reduction set to the full 20 dB of reduction. And it's set in dialogue mode and gentle, so you get less artifacts. Um, and like I say, this is what you've been listening to. If I turn off the gate, then when I'm not talking, you can still hear you know, you do a lot of the noise in the background. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bypass the, the voice denoise, and I'll give you a warning, it's gonna get really noisy. So five, four, three, two, one. And so that noise is really present. You can definitely hear it when you're not talking and you can understand it when I'm talking over it, uh, but still it's pretty annoying. I'm gonna turn this back on. And I'm gonna leave the gate off for a moment because when doing the comparison with the DNS uh, from Cedar, Cedar doesn't have at least a configurable gate. It looks like they just run in continuous mode um, and they have their learn option um, turned on by default. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch back over to the other computer and so what do we got here? Well, we got Spectrograph. This is the RME DigiCheck. You've got RME's total mix effects up here where you can see the, my voice coming in on this, this Dante channel here and it gets fed back out. So the headphones that I'm listening on is this phone's channel over here. And we got Dante controller. For those who are not familiar, this is a matrix that lets you patch any input to any output. And then we've also got the Cedar DNS uh, little web interface going. So we, you can see what it's doing and how the signals are bouncing around as I talk, right? And like I said, at the moment, uh, and I'll show, so here is the rope, the, that red X2P, which is the source, right? So you got left and right, and those left and right are going into channels one and two on the DNS. And then um, they are also going into channels three and four here on the Mac, right? And so that's what gets you into the isotope chain. 
And then, you know, and that's one of the nice things about Dante is that, you know, this device can send to multiple receivers at the same time. And so both of them are getting the exact same signal at the exact same time. And so now what I'm going to do is this here is the, the from roadcaster label is basically this input channel here. So this is where you're hearing me coming in. And right now you can see that it's got the patched in from channels three and four on um, the Mac. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come over here to channel one on the DNS, which is the left channel, and I'm going to patch the input to that left channel. And so now <clears throat> what you're hearing is on the left side is the DNS and on the right side is the uh, isotope chain. And you probably, I should have said, please use headphones because um, that'll make it easier to hear the two, right? And now I'll patch over the other side. And so now it's going entirely through DNS. Uh, you can see that DNS is also set for 20 dB of reduction and that channels one and two here are grouped. So you make any change, it reflects it on both sides, right? I can turn off the noise reduction for this channel group and you're back to hearing all that huge background noise and I'll turn it back on. And so with the DNS, even though there's no noise gate in front of it, when I stop talking, you don't really hear any of that background noise is my uh, one thing I noticed. And then the second thing I noticed is that when I am talking, I don't hear that sort of high pitched shimmer that I get with the isotope uh, voice denoise. And so like if I go back over here and bring the isotope back in. So again, you're hearing the isotope on the left channel and you're hearing DNS on the right channel. And you can definitely hear that, that persistent noise even when I'm not talking on the uh, isotope side. I'll bring the other channel back over. And so here, again, it's really apparent that um, <clears throat> that background noise is still there with isotope and the shimmer, when I, even when I'm talking, is still there. And so that's kind of it. I mean, it is true that isotope has a more advanced noise uh, reduction plugin called the spectral noise reduction, and it is definitely better, but it doesn't work for live streaming. Um, it's extremely CPU intensive. And when you turn on, you know, you crank all the quality settings up to max, it introduces over two seconds of latency, which just is a deal breaker for anything where you, that you're trying to do live. And so with this uh, DNS from Cedar, which, like I say, they've been a, you know, an industry standard in broadcast and film for several decades uh, with their technology. As you can hear, switch over, and that noise is gone. It does affect my voice. There's no question about that. There's, you know, noise reduction systems are not pure magic, um, but uh, this makes it way, makes me may, blah, way more intelligible and gets rid of all that background noise. And it's a dedicated rack mount unit that's mounted in the rack behind me now. And um, I don't have to worry about if the Mac's going to crash or not. Um, like I say, I'm not putting Isotope down. Um, their spectral plugin is really quite good and can give, I think, results that are maybe even better what you're hearing in real time through the DNS. Uh, I did a, a experiment with that a little bit. 
Um, <clears throat> but my use case is I need live stream uh, for video conferencing because I do that, you know, anywhere from half to all day long for my job. And I need something that works in real time, doesn't introduce latency. You know, the Cedar, the folks say they add basically about 10 samples of latency, which when you're doing 48 kilohertz means basically no latency at all to speak of. Certainly not that you can hear. And I think it's pretty amazing. You know, it is expensive, but whatever their secret sauce is, it works and it's working really well. And I'm actually quite happy. It was a bit of a gamble and the gamble paid off. Anyway, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, leave, leave them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. Thanks. Cheers.